So in this lesson, we are going to learn how to find the inverse Laplace transforms of rational functions using the method of partial fractions. Now, the method of partial fractions allows us to decompose a complex rational function into the sum of simple rational functions. In this lesson, we are going to consider rational functions of the form p of s divided by q of s, where the degree of p is less than that of q, and then q of s is said not to be equal to zero. Also in this lesson, we are going to consider three cases of rational functions. A. Rational functions with non-repeated linear factors. B. Rational functions with repeated linear factors. And then C. Rational functions with quadratic factors. So we have an example here. Given that f of s is equal to 7s minus 1 divided by s plus 1, s plus 2, s minus 3, we are going to find its inverse Laplace transform. Now, this is an example of a rational function with non-repeated linear factors. Let's try to solve this problem together. So we are given the Laplace transform, that is f of s, f of s equals 7s minus 1 divided by s plus 1, s plus 2, s minus 3. So this is a rational function, as we said earlier, of non-repeated linear factors. So the partial fraction decomposition is given by a divided by s plus 1 plus b divided by s plus 2 and then plus c divided by s minus 3. So this is the partial fraction decomposition of this rational function. Mind you, the denominator is made up of non-repeated linear factors. So, first of all, we are going to decompose this complex rational function into the sum of simple rational functions, and then we find the inverse Laplace transform. So, first of all, let's try to find the LCM. So, basically, the LCM is going to be the product of these three linear factors. Now, s plus 1, s plus 2, s minus 3 divided by s plus 1. So that is going to cancel out. We are left with s plus 2, s minus 3. So we have a times s plus 2, s minus 3 plus b. Also s plus 2 goes away. We have s plus 1, s minus 3. And then plus c, s minus 3 goes away. We have s plus 1 and then s plus 2. So that is equal to the left hand side 7s minus 1 s plus 1 s plus 2 s minus 3. Now we are going to equate the numerator because we have the denominators to be the same. So equating the numerator or the numerators we have 7s minus 1 and that is equal to a times s plus 2 s minus 3 plus b times s plus 1 s minus 3 plus c times s plus 1 s plus 2 now what you are going to do next is to find the values of a b and c a b and c are real numbers or they are constants so what we are going to do is we are going to put in values of s such that two of the constants or two of the real numbers go to zero so that we can find the other one so first let's try to find the value of a now to find the value of a we need to make sure that b and then c both of them go to zero so here we have s plus one s plus one so we are going to put s equals negative one then negative one plus one is zero zero times any other value here becomes zero same applies to the coefficients of c so we are going to put s equals negative 1 so that on the left hand side we are going to have we are going to have 7 times negative 1 minus 1 7 times negative 1 minus 1 and that will be equal to because b and then c will go to 0 let's focus on a so we have a into bracket negative 1 plus 2 we have a into bracket negative 1 plus 2 and then negative 1 minus 3 negative 1 minus 3 so this becomes negative 7 
minus 1. So we have negative 8 on the left hand side. And that will be equal to a times this is 1. And then that is negative 4. So this becomes negative 4a. So we divide through by negative 4, by negative 4. And then we have the value of a to be equal to 2. So this is the value of a. So next, let's try to find the value of b. So to find the value of b, it means that a and then c both goes to 0. Here we have s plus 2, we have s plus 2. So we can put s equals negative 2. So we put s equals negative 2. So that on the left hand side, we are going to have 7 times negative 2 minus 1. And that will be equal to, for b, we have negative 2 plus 1. So b times negative 2 plus 1. And then negative 2 minus 3. Negative 2 minus 3. So we are going to have 7 times negative 2, that is negative 14 minus 1, negative 15. On the left hand side equals b times negative 1 times negative 5. And this becomes 5b. So we divide through by 5. And then we have b equals negative 3. So this is the value of b. Next, let's go to, or let's try to find the value of c. So to find the value of c, here we have s minus 3, s minus 3. So we are going to put s equals 3, so that a and then b all go to 0. And then we can find the value of c. So we put s, we are going to put s equals 3. And then on the left hand side, we have 7 times 3 minus 1. That is equal to, on the right hand side, we are going to have c times, we are going to have c times 3 plus 1 times 3 plus 2. So that will be equal to, we have c times 3 plus 1 is 4, and then 3 plus 2 is 5. So we are going to have on the right hand side 4 times 5, which is 20, so 20c. And then on the left hand side, we have 7 times 3, which is 21 minus 1, that is also 20. So we divide through by 20, we divide through by 20, and then we have we have c equals 1. We have c equals 1. Therefore, we have the Laplace transform f of s giving us, so we have a divided by s plus 1. So a, a is 2, so 2 divided by s plus 1 plus b, b is negative 3, so minus 3 divided by s plus 2 and then plus c c is also 1 so divided by s minus 3 so this is the decomposed form of the rational function or better still the laplace transform that was given to us the next thing is to find the inverse laplace transform so we have f of t equals to the inverse laplace transform of the function f of s so we have f of t equals the inverse Laplace transform of 2 divided by s plus 1 minus 3 over s plus 2 plus 1 over s minus 3. So using the linearity property of the inverse Laplace transform, we are going to pull out the constants. So we have 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 and then minus, we pull out 3 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2. And then plus the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3. Now the moment you have 1 over s plus a or 1 over s minus a, then you should be looking out for the function, the function f of t. You should be looking out for the function f of t equals e to the power a t. 
this function's Laplace transform will give you f of s equals 1 over s minus a. So the moment you have 1 over s minus a or something like 1 over s plus a, you should be looking out for f of t equals e to the power 80. So we have this to be equal to 2 times here we have 1 over s plus 1. So comparing that with this, you realize that a is negative 1. Therefore, we are going to have e to the power negative 1 times t and that is e to the power negative t. So e to the power negative t minus 3. Also using this Laplace transform, you have a to be negative 2. So e to the power negative 2t and then lastly you have plus 1 this is e to the power 3t because a is equal to 3 therefore you have f of t equals 2 times e to the power negative t minus 3 times e to the power negative 2t plus e to the power 3t so this is the inverse Laplace transform of the function given.